Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to set up load balancing on an Edge Router X. And I apologize for the loud fan noises in the background if you can hear it. I'm in the process of moving so I don't have my actual desktop set up. And I'm using this MacBook which is uh, really super loud compared to uh, the usual recording that uh, I do. Also I'm in a room that is completely empty so it's echoey so I apologize in advance for that. And if you've been wondering why I haven't put out a video in like three months, it's because I've been moving and transitioning jobs and all kinds of other stuff. So I've been extremely busy and just haven't had time to do it. But anyways, we're going to be setting up load balancing today. And specifically, we're going to be setting up a failover type of load balancing. So what load balancing does is it'll allow you to use uh, two different service providers or two different means of connecting to the internet. And with just straight up load balancing, it's going to try and use uh, the two connections at the same time. It might load balance based off of uh, which client is using it at the time, or it might just split traffic down the middle. I'm not 100% sure which way the edge router does it by default. I haven't looked too much into it, which is why I'm going to be setting up a failover because one, it's just more common, and two, um, there's not a whole lot of... Uh, crazy stuff that tries to happen in the background and it's a lot less likely to uh, cause any issues. Regular load balancing, depending on how it's done, can actually cause issues if you straight up split one packet down uh, one pipe and another packet down another. Typically what you see with a dual, what's called a dual WAN setup, is um, failover. So you have your primary connection, say your cable or your DSL, and then a secondary, which could be an LTE modem or something wireless. It's only designed to be used if the primary goes down. It's not really designed to perform well, if that makes any sense. So that's what we're going to be configuring today. Now, I'm starting out on a fresh edge router. Um, the wizard I'm going to use will actually blow out any configuration that's existing. So if you have an edge router that you don't want to lose your configs for, uh, don't use the wizard. There are manual commands that you can put in to add this to a, an existing edge router. And that is in this guide that I will be referencing for this video. And link uh, to this is in the description below, by the way, if you want to follow along. But assuming that you've got a fresh ed route, edge router and you want to set this up uh, just from scratch, go to the Wizards tab of your uh, router's homepage. And right under Basic Setup, there is a Load Balancing Wizard. Now don't worry about load balancing too. I'm actually not sure ex exactly what's different about it. Uh, it looks like it's designed more for wireless. Um, I haven't dug into that, don't really know what it does. So we're going to be using the uh, first load balancing wizard. And it's going to take us through roughly the uh, same setup as the basic setup wizard, if you remember that from the um, how to set up an edge router video. Only difference is you're going to be uh, configuring two internet ports. So. Right here, the first one, first internet port, I'm going to use uh, Ethernet 0. I have this connected to my cable modem using uh, Spectrum as an ISP. So the internet connection type is DHCP, and I want the default firewall on it. So leave that checked. Now, second internet port, we're going to use Ethernet 1. This is actually this is connected to my makeshift uh, secondary ISP. In reality, what it is is it's a laptop um, sharing its Wi-Fi connection to the Ethernet port, and the Wi-Fi connection is connected to my cell phone hotspot. So that's kind of a way you can do a makeshift um, LTE failover if you have a cell phone that you're not using. I do plan to do another video on how to actually make kind of a wireless uh, modem type thing using a Raspberry Pi for failover, but that's going to be a whole different video. Um, as far as this goes, I'm going to check this box that says failover only. And it says only this interface if the other fails. That's a poor grammar, but what it means is it's only going to fail over to the second internet port if the first one has an issue. It's not going to be using the second one any other time. Now the other sections are basically the exact same as um, the default or basic setup wizard. So you can change your LAN IP if you want, uh, enable disable the DHCP server, and add a new user or keep existing. I'm just gonna keep my existing uh, right now. Um, land to land exclusion, don't worry about, just leave that enabled. And hit apply, apply changes, and then reboot the router. And while this is rebooting, it's gonna completely wipe the edge router and set it back up from scratch using these uh, settings that we put in. All right, so once it's back up, just log in. 
and let's see it took us back to the wizards so let's go to the dashboard and you can see we have two WAN interfaces WAN and WAN2 both have IP addresses so this is our primary IP or our primary connection and this is our secondary so if anything happens to the primary we should just automatically fail over to the secondary as if nothing happened and then once the primary is back up it should fail back to the primary because typically your backup connection traditionally is a connection that's um, metered so something like LTE you might have a data cap on it so what you don't want is to fail over to LTE and stay there indefinitely I'm just using LTE as an example um, it could be anything or it could be metered or not metered but you don't want to stay on your secondary path because typically it's slower or a lot less reliable so for the rest of it you can see we have our standard um, local switch zero uh, if we go into the configuration of that in the VLAN tab you can see we only have the switch enabled on Ethernet 2, 3, and 4, and that, that's pretty much everything. We now have load balancing set up, so really all we have to do now is uh, test it. That's, that's really all there is to it using the wizard. So let's uh, go to speed test and uh, see what we can do here. So you can see we are on spectrum. So if we run this, we should see typical spectrum speeds which I'm actually on Wi-Fi, so my speeds are gonna be a lot lower than they should be. Yeah, 70, I'm actually supposed to be getting 200 meg. Um, so we're working. So now let's kind of initiate a failover um, situation here. Actually, I'm gonna open a uh, terminal and start a ping to uh, Google's DNS just so we can see uh, how long it takes to fail this over. So we got that running now, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut down um, our primary WAN interface on the edge router. Now the performance of failover might be a little bit different if I caused an indirect failure, like going down and unplugging my modem uh, coax cable. That would be indirectly affecting the service. Um, I know some routers, if you just shut down an interface, it will immediately fail over with zero downtime, which isn't what would happen in real life if you just lost uh, connection to your ISP on the ISP side. But just for the sake of uh, simplicity and because I'm lazy and don't want to run downstairs, I'm just going to shut this interface down and see what happens. So disabling the primary WAN interface, let's bring the terminal back up. And you can see we're dropping one, two, three, four, five, oh, 13 pings. So we dropped 13 packets and now we are pinging again. So that was the failover. You can see here at the top, this was the spectrum connection time to live of 51 to uh, get to Google's DNS and the latency is between like 15 and 20 and down here we've got a time to live of 48 to get to the DNS server with a lot higher latency so we've failed over to the LTE connection and if we go back to speed test refresh the page alright so yep here we go it says we are on Verizon we have a completely different IP and if we do the speed test now should be a ton slower than it was but we're still on the internet we're still able to load things so there we go 55 milliseconds and we're only getting roughly 10 megs a second so we're definitely not on spectrum anymore but this is what load balancing does you have two internet connections two different ones um, primary goes out fails over to your secondary now let's uh, go ahead and re-enable this interface now what's going to happen is it's going to sit here for a little bit. It's going to give it the time, even after the primary comes back up, it's going to give it a little bit of time and then it will eventually fail over to it. It won't stay on Ethernet 1 for that long, but um, failing back is not instant. And the reason it's not instant is because sometimes it takes a little while for the actual connection to become stable. So just because a connection comes up and it's able to ping out, doesn't necessarily mean that it's 100% uh, working. So that's why it's gonna take a little longer to go back to the primary than it uh, did to fail over to the secondary. And on our router's homepage, we can see that the WAN connection is back up. We have an IP address, but we are still um, testing on those slow Verizon speeds. So in my experience with failover, it generally takes roughly five minutes to uh, fail back somewhere between like three and five minutes to fail back to the primary path after uh, being restored. 
So here's something that's a little interesting. So according to the pings, we haven't actually failed back over to uh, the primary path. However, when I do a speed test, I'm getting 86 down, and there's no way that my phone should be able to do that. And also 10 up. So these are spectrum speeds. So what I believe has happened is um, it has failed back over to the primary. However, I think the existing connections that it has going are uh, still kind of cached, and it's still using the old path for connections that are actively running. But I think as connections get set up and torn down, it will start using the uh, Spectrum path instead of Verizon. So let's stop this ping and just uh, redo it. Yep, there we go. So because I stopped the ping just there, or just now, um, it was doing the time to live 48 on the old path. And I stopped it, tore down that connection, and started a new ping. And I guess I shouldn't say connection because it's a ping. It's a flow, technically. So since I stopped that one and started a new flow, it started using the primary path. So we actually did fail over before then, and my timer here is only at two minutes right now. So it took less than less than two minutes, well, less than three minutes to uh, actually fail over and start using Spectrum again. However, there's still a bunch of oddities. Like this speed test still says I'm on Verizon, but when the speed test goes through, the speeds are definitely not from my cell phone. So. It'll take a few minutes to kind of clear out all the oddities with that. And I bet if we close that tab, open a new speed test tab, that it'll show that we're on Spectrum. And it does. So if you were just here to see how to set up load balancing and kind of how to test it and how it works, uh, this is the point where the video should end. However, I am going to go into just a few more of the options that you can set on this. According to this guide, so down here uh, closer to the bottom or the middle of the guide, there are additional load balancing options, and what those are is uh, count success, uh, failure, initial delay, interval, and type. So what we can set manually on the router is um, basically how many pings it's going to try before uh, it's considered successful for a certain path. And also we can set how many um, pings do we want to fail before it says that that link is down and fails over to the backup path. And we can also set that delay, kind of the delay that I was talking about where um, a path may be up, but it's not going to actually start doing anything with it yet. So we can set how many seconds we want it to wait before it starts doing an initial route test on a specific interface. And we can also change the ping interval, how often it uh, checks to see that that path is still working. So if we set the interval to like 10 seconds between pings, it's going to take 10 seconds um, before a failed ping um, can go out or before it'll see a failed ping. So the interval and the count failure are kind of going to, uh, actually all of these are gonna be intertwined with each other. So if we set the interval to every 10 seconds and then we set a failure of um, six pings, then that's gonna be 60 seconds before it deems that connection down. And if we set the count success to like six, then that means it's gonna take another minute for the path to be considered back up. And these options you don't have to change, they're just additional if you want to fine tune how your failover works. Um, the last one is also type, and that is uh, where you want to ping. So by default, the edge router is actually going to be pinging uh, ping.ubnt.com just to uh, test internet connectivity. If you don't want it to ping that, you want it to ping, say, Google's DNS, for example, like what I was doing, 8.8.8.8 you can manually define that and it's going to use that IP address to ping to determine whether or not a path is working or not. Now below that you've got a few other options such as the failover only option which I used uh, in the GUI and local load balancing uh, etc etc. Local load balancing is basically whether or not the uh, router itself is going to use load balanced paths it's not talking about router coming from a client through the router to the internet. It's talking about the actual router. It's going to determine whether or not um, traffic sourced by the router is going to be load balanced or not. And also, if you're just going to do true load balancing, you can set the weight, which basically just says uh, how much traffic is going to be load balanced uh, towards one particular interface versus another. So. You can see that the default is 50-50. It's going to send like one packet out one, one packet out the other. And you can change that to the example here is a 70-30 split. So 70% of the time it's going to be sending traffic out one connection. 30% of the time it's going to send it out the other. 
And here are the settings for um, kind of that thing that I was talking about where our pings were still using Verizon even after Spectrum was already back up. So it says that this option keeps the traffic sessions on the same interface until they time out. So obviously that is set because mine wasn't timing out. But these options can just change kind of how it determines um, what sessions are going to be kept open. Like for example, this first one, traffic sessions on the same WAN interface based on destination address or based on destination port, source address, source port, etc. And then some troubleshooting options. So I'm not actually going to uh, configure these options, but if this were mine, um, actually let's just jump on the router here and take a look at the configuration commands versus um, what this is telling us. So we're going to do show configuration commands and let's go down to the load balancing section. So right here, just from doing the wizard, we have this load balance section which created group G, which is the example that they use in the documentation, and Ethernet 0 and Ethernet 1, Ethernet 1 being failover only, and that's because I checked that checkbox in the wizard. It also has a uh, local load balancing enabled and whatever this local metric change disabled. I don't actually know what that is. So you can see that none of these additional options have been configured by the wizard. We have a base load balancing um, configuration. But you can see that all of this firewall configuration that it has in the guide, uh, it has that in there. It's just straight out of the wizard. So if you don't want to run the wizard, you can just throw all of these uh, commands in and modify your existing configuration to use load balancing. Now before I end the video, I am actually going to show true load balancing, even though I usually don't want to use it. But if I just go into configure and I delete uh, load balance group G interface ethernet one failover only, and I set load balance group G interface ethernet one, Actually, let's uh, let's go ahead and commit that, and then set the load balance group G interface ETH1. All right, I'm not sure why it kept selling, telling me that it already existed, um, but it is already in there. So right now, it should be just straight up load balancing instead of um, failing over. So let's bring our ping back up, and you can see there. So I didn't let it go, but we had one that was actually using uh, Verizon. All right, so that one's Spectrum. Stop that and this one's on Verizon. So you see what it's doing with regular load balancing is it's uh, kind of half the time using one connection, half the time using the other. If you have two pretty decent connections and you want this to be the case, uh, it looks like it is balancing it based on something. I'm not actually sure what the default is. Maybe this says... Um, all right, I'm not seeing anything where it says what the default um, balancing mechanism is, but it looks like it's separating it in flows, so it shouldn't really cause any issues with out of order or um, asynchronous uh, packets. So you should be pretty good to just do regular load balancing if that's your cup of tea. Um, I would not use it with an actual fast cable connection and LTE unless you don't mind getting stuck with a uh, slow speed every once in a while. Let's kind of see what speed test does here. It looks like we got 9 milliseconds and a spectrum IP with a spectrum performance. All right, anyways, before I start going down the rabbit hole and just testing a whole bunch of stuff, because uh, I actually haven't messed with the load balancing too much before, so I'm having a little bit too much fun, so I'm going to just stop the video now before I ramble on. Uh, hopefully you learned something from this. Hopefully you're able to get load balancing going yourself. Like I said, I do plan on making a video that's kind of showing a uh, makeshift um, failover setup using a Raspberry Pi or maybe an old laptop. Um, so that'll be coming and I'll be talking about load balancing a little bit more in that one. But hopefully this one just get, gets you off the ground and uh, gets you going. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And as always, um, leave any ideas for future videos you have down there. I will try to get to them when I can. Like I said, I've been super busy for the last few months with moving and everything. But I do read all the comments and I do try to get to all of your video suggestions if possible. But in the meantime, happy networking.